Okay then my friends, so in the last lesson we very briefly talked about routes and views and how this current route inside the web file is returning the welcome view which we then ultimately see in the browser when we visit this path. So in this lesson we'll be taking a more in-depth look at this process by making some additional routes and we'll also be talking a little bit about Blade which is the default templating engine within a Laravel application which we use to create views. So then, to begin with, let's think about a website which has multiple pages and each one of those pages is normally associated with a URL in the address bar in a browser, right? For example, the URL for a contact page might be yourdomain.com forward slash contact and the URL for an about page might be yourdomain.com forward slash about. For the home page, it's probably just yourdomain.com forward slash. So with each one of those URLs, we'd see a different HTML page in the browser. Now the first part of the URL is the domain itself and that generally always stays the same for any given website but the parts after the domain which start with a forward slash do change and this part of the URL is something which is often called the route path. Now when we visit URLs like this in the browser for example when we click on a link to go to the contact page the browser sends a get request to the server for that URL. So Normally, then the server responds by sending back an HTML page for that URL. Now, when we set up routes with a Laravel application, what we're doing is actually setting up a way to handle requests to those route paths. For example, this default route right here is set up to handle get requests to this path, which is just forward slash. So in our case, that would be when we just visit the ninja underscore network dot test forward slash URL in the address bar. And in fact, since nothing comes after the forward slash, we can omit that from the address bound when we send the request. But when that request comes into the server, we're handling it right here. And in Laravel, the way we handle the request is by firing a function, which is the second argument inside this get method. Within that function, we return a response that we want to send to the browser. And in this case, we say we want to return a view by using the view function built into Laravel. Now inside that function as an argument, we say what view should be used. And in our case, that's the welcome view. So then when we return a view like this using the view function, Laravel automatically looks in the views folder for a view of the same name, welcome in this case. And we don't add the blade or PHP extension, Laravel just knows to look for the welcome view regardless of that. So then let's have a quick look at that view. Now this view at the moment looks almost the same as a regular HTML file and I say almost because it's not quite the same and that's because the value of the lang attribute in the HTML tag is this dynamic value denoted by a set of two curly braces and this is a feature of Blade, the templating engine that we're using which allows us to output these dynamic values within the view. So you'll notice if I rename the file to remove the dot blade part then the syntax highlighting up here changes because now this is a regular PHP file which can still have HTML inside it but we can't use those double curly braces anymore to output dynamic values. This would now just be the literal string that looks exactly like this. So when we're using blade to make our templates we need to add on the dot blade bit just before the dot PHP extension. When we do that we're now able to use all of blades features inside this view file. Now, by the way, the reason I get syntax highlighting for blade files in VS Code is because I've got an extension installed into VS Code called Laravel Blade. So I would recommend installing that package right here if you're going to be working with blade templates. I'd also recommend another package called PHP IntelliFence, which gives you a lot of helpful intelligence for PHP code. And it really helps when you're making these Laravel apps. Anyway, we know now that when we use the view function within a route handler to say, we want to return a view to the browser. So Laravel finds that view in the views directory, and then that view gets rendered by the blade template engine into an HTML document, which then gets sent to the browser. Now we're going to talk more about the different things we can do with blade within our views over the next couple of lessons. But for now, I want to try making another route handler, which sends back a different view. So let's go back to the web file in the routes directory, which is where you're going to be making all of your route handlers and we'll set this up. So then I want to make a route handler for a get request to the path forward slash ninjas. And in response, I want to send back a view for that route. And I can do that by writing route, which is a Laravel class built into the framework. And then we use a double colon to say, use one of the class methods, which is called get. 
because we're responding to a get request. Now, just like in the original route example up here, we pass in two arguments. The first one is the route path, which is going to be forward slash ninjas. And the second one is a handler function, which fires on the server when a get request comes in for this path. And then inside the function, we want to return a view. So we use the built-in view function as a return value. And then we just need to pass in the name of the view that we want to render. Now we don't actually have one created yet, so let's do that first of all. So I could just create a new file directly inside this views folder called ninjas or something, and then we'd reference that view in the view function. But a more organized way to work with views is to use subdirectories for any related views or any views which all deal with a certain type of data. So for example, if I had a blog section of the website which dealt with blog data, then I'd probably make a blogs subdirectory right here which contained a bunch of views which relate to that blog data. So I might make an index view to list all the blogs. I might make a create view for a form page to add new blogs and I might make a show view to show the details of a single blog. And when we do this, we're sticking to a bit of a Laravel convention in terms of naming those files and views, but also in terms of how we organize the files into these subfolders too. So we're going to do this for ninjas in our project by creating a ninjas subdirectory because eventually we'll be dealing with ninja data. And all the views using that data are going to live inside this folder. To begin with, we're going to create the index view, which eventually is going to output all the ninjas in a list. So remember, after the view name, we need .blade before the PHP extension. To tell Laravel, we'll be using blade syntax at some point in this file. Now, when we have a view in a subdirectory like this, how do we reference it inside the view function that we want to return? So all we have to do is just put the name of the folder first, which is ninjas, and then we add a dot to say, look, we're going to go inside that folder and then the name of the view itself, which is index. And that's it. All right, then. So now let's flesh out this index view. So I'm going to boilerplate this file by tapping doc and then a tab. And then up here for the title, we'll just say Ninja Network again. Maybe do a little pipe and say home or something like that. And then inside the body itself, we'll do an H2. And that will say currently available ninjas. And then below that, we'll do a UL tag. Inside that, an LI. And we'll just say ninjas here. This is eventually where we're going to output all the ninjas, right? So we're going to have a list of different ninja documents that we get from the database eventually, cycle through those, and output them inside the template. For now, this will do, just to make sure everything's working. All right, then. So we also want to go to the welcome page and I'm going to add in the href right here, which is going to be to forward slash ninjas. Now that is the route that we just set up right here. So when we go to the welcome page in a browser and we see this view, when we click on this link, that sends a get request to the server, to this path right here. Then on the server, we handle that get request right here to that forward slash ninjas path. And in response, we fire this function and render a view, which is the ninjas.index one, this one right here. So let's see if this works. All right, and now in a browser from the welcome page, I'm going to click this link right here, which sends a request to the forward slash ninjas route. And then we should see the ninjas page in the browser, which gets sent back from the server. Awesome. So then in just a few minutes, you've learned how to make a route handler function for different paths and how to return a view in those functions as a response. And with that little bit of knowledge alone, you can make a pretty content rich static website if you wanted to with multiple different pages. But there's loads more to routing and views than we've seen in this video. So we're going to carry on the topic in the next lesson by looking at route wildcards and how to pass data into views as well.